All right, all right, all right. So um, I know that was easy, right? For for just just to so I am, for I am, the uh, the old man, is he supposed to be the retirement age? I mean, um, the time he died, the retirement age. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. You gonna give her this day? Okay, so then we're just gonna run through this example. Oh wait, hold on. It doesn't take too long. Oh, by the way, <laughs> test one is already done, but I think I test two is gonna be here on this time. It could be the class before or after, and I uh, I also okay. factored in some time to have like a review session. Right, it probably won't be a whole lecture, but at least half a lecture will. We can do some review. Okay. So test two will cover chapters four, five, and six, and chapter five is actually. A a pretty short one. So I gave you the handout for chapter five already. We're going to go through that on Wednesday. Okay. So remember to bring that. You can even try some of the problems ahead of time if you'd like. Just to, it, it will probably be better that way. But um, I'm going to do an example of a cubic function. Because these show up on finals sometimes. And that's going to prove uh, okay. This, I'm sorry, this is a continuation from last class? Yeah. Okay. So continue from last class, chapter four. This is the last example in chapter four. So, so we're going to use qualitative methods to sketch the, to graph the solution, right? So what was the first thing we did when we were looking at using qualitative methods? Find the steady states and the inflection points. How do I find the steady states? Zero. Set what equal to zero? The derivative. The derivative. So this guy, we're just going to set him equal to zero. So this means that y is equal to, where are the solutions? Uh, one, zero, three, and eight. So these guys here are your steady states. And what about inflection points? How do we find those? Take the second, second derivative. So you find the derivative of that fact. So we can know that g is equal to y. You can do a triple product rule, but I'd probably multiply out. So I multiply on the second pair of brackets. I get y squared minus 11y plus 24. And so that gives me y cubed minus 11y squared plus 24y which means that g prime is equal to 3y squared minus 22y plus 24. Yep. So now we are going to solve for this. How do I solve for that? So I set that equal to 0. What do we get? I tried it for him. So the only way to get a 3 is a 3 and a 1. Uh, How do I get these? I need two numbers here that multiply would give me 24. And the close term and the far term would give me minus 22. What are the numbers? Two numbers? 24. How do I get 24? Be something like 12 and 2, could be 8 and 3. I'll probably try 8 and 3. So, where do you want the 8 to go? Where do you want the 3 to go? 
I guess the eight here and the three there. No. Would that work? Wait, this is the second derivative? Uh, yeah, I just found the second derivative here. I said I equal to zero, it's a quadratic, I'm trying to foil. Um, does that work? No, eight isn't the second problem. Hmm? Isn't eight on the other side? Yeah. yeah. You think eight would be here? Why? I don't know. No, 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 Because you'd be able to factor out a three, which you can't. So, but that was what are the numbers? Four. Four and six. Four and six. Where was the four and the six go? Four. Do you guys remember how to check this? No. <laughs> the two terms that are close together added to the two terms that are far away should give you the middle term. So for example, here I would get a 4y, 3 6 is 18, here I would get an 18y. I need to make sure that those two numbers I can add to get a minus 22. And I could get a minus 22 from those. If I have a minus 4 and a minus 18, I'll get a minus 22. The only way to get a minus 4 is to have a minus here and a minus here. Can this be on our next test, please? It is on the next test. No, just factoring? Like, not that as well. <laughs> no, that's, that's way below you right now. So you get y equals 4 thirds or y equals 6. These are our inflection points. Okay, so after I find the steady states and inflection points, what else can we do? What do I graph? Step two is to draw the stability graph. How do you draw that cubic? You're basically graphing y prime versus y. How do you graph that function? What do the steady states become? The steady states are the horizontal and intercepts. So there's a one at zero, there's one at three, and there's one at eight. How do I draw the graph? the inflection points so you know where the graph is going to change first. Uh, we can draw the graph before that. Right, oh, plug in values in between here to figure out where the graph is. First I know it's a cubic graph, when I expand I get y cubed. So I automatically know that the right side is going to go up, the left side is going down. So that much we know. I can plug in a number in between here, like a 1. If I plug in 1 here, this will be negative, that will be negative. Right? Negative times negative is a positive times a positive. So the graph will be up here. If I plug in a number like a 4, this would be positive, this would be positive, that would be negative. So the graph would be down here. And so I know that my graph would look like that. So just pre calc. Um, level is okay, you don't need to know exactly where it is. But I just know that this part here is gonna be that, um, I have those two points, four thirds or six. So this has to be the four thirds. And then this one would occur at the six. And those are my inflection points. These are steady states, these are steady states. This is a steady state. For each steady state, what are we gonna do? Three arrows. So over here, what's the arrow? Left. Going to the left because the graph is below the horizontal. Over here? To the right. Right because the graph is above the horizontal. So this is an unstable steady state. Over here? Right. Right because the graph is above the horizontal. Over here? Left, left because the graph is below the horizontal. This is a stable state. <laughs> over here to the left? Left. 
left because the graph is below the horizontal over here right right because the graph is above the horizontal <coughs> and we have another on stairs that's called the stability graph um, step three as I said we can skip it if someone wants to come back and do it I can but you don't really need it finally we do step four for the solution graph. Solution graph. You're basically going to graph y versus t. You're going to put in all those points up before your steady states and your inflections. So zero was a steady state. So on this horizontal axis here is a steady state. Three was another steady state. Eight was another steady state. My inflections were four thirds. This is the inflection point. And six. This is a, another inflection. Questions so far? Now we put in the initial conditions. Before I ask you, y of zero was one, was one of them. Where would one fall? Uh, what? Between zero and four over three. So the one would be here. Now, if my graph started there, what would it look like? What would it be doing? Going up or down? Up. Right. One would be here, the arrow says go that way towards the three. So I will be going up. What's my concavity? At four over three. Oh, it's, um, it's. It's concave. It's concave. What? Concave down. No, down. Down. Remember, this is an inflection. So it's concave up. up. So it has to be concave up. And so when I hit this flexion point, I switch the concave down so I can level off. Right? So that's why I skipped step three. I didn't need it. I can kind of figure out what is going on. Okay. Um, the next one was at five. So that's here. What goes on at five? Which means I'm over here. It should be approaching three. What's my concavity? Down. So I should be going like this? No. No. Oh, concave up and concave level off up. at three? Concave up, up like a cup. So yeah. I should be going like this, yeah. so I can level off. What if I was here, negative one? It'll go to, 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 to the left, it's away from zero. <laughs> Running away from zero. Yeah. Um, what if I was here at seven? Well, seven is approaching. It's it's a going away to three. Seven six. would be. Six. So it's going towards it's three. It's going towards three. So what would it look like? It's concave down and inflection. Down. Point. So hit the inflection, switch to up, yes. and level yeah. off. Yeah. What if I was at nine? Away. At nine, I'd be over here. I'd run away from eight, so I'd go that way. Now at any even time, you only have to draw one of these. I just, I'm just getting, giving you some practice on it. But usually in a question, I'll only give you one initial point, and you just draw that one curve. Oh, okay. But that would be what? Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. So basically, the, I think up here, everyone sort of gets it. The things you have to remember is how to graph stuff, how to factor stuff. And that's that. Um, so homework for chapter four is actually due next time. You should probably look over the chapter five stuff. I have things to give back. If you want to hang around? Um, oh, did yeah. You give back the quizzes. What? You give back the quizzes and the homework. Yeah. I, well, I have quizzes and homework at this point. <laughs> you don't want them? No. <laughs> Thanks for the offer.